Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me Channel. Today we are going to look at how to do basic mole calculations. In order for you to understand this video fully, I would highly recommend you check out the videos in the link de in description below. Two of those videos will teach you how to balance equations and the third video will give you some basics on the moles that you need to know before you get into all the mole calculations. So check it out in the link uh, this in the description below if you don't know how to do any of these things. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we have a question because one of the most basic things we can do with moles is we can figure out we can figure out how much of the products we're going to get from a reaction based on the masses of the reactants. Okay, so we have 80 grams of calcium reacting with 146 grams of hydrochloric acid giving us calcium chloride and hydrogen. But we need to figure out how much of each in grams we're gonna get. So, let's get started on this. First thing I like to do in such questions, and that's most questions to do with moles, first thing I like to do is to figure out molecular weight of everything here. So let's do just that. Okay, so let's write down our MR values here. So calcium, if you look on a periodic table, it will be 40 grams per mole. So that one is fairly straightforward, we just look at the periodic table. What about hydrochloric acid? HCl. So one hydrochloric acid will have one gram from hydrogen plus 35.5 grams from chlorine, which gives us 36.5 grams per mole. Okay, what about calcium chloride? Now, so this one is quite big. We get 40 grams per mole from calcium plus 2 times 35.5 grams because we have two chlorine molecules here from chlorine which gives us, should give us 111, 111 grams per mole. Okay, the final one we need to consider is hydrogen. Now in its gas form, it appears as H2, an element of hydrogen. Now, each hydrogen molecule is one gram per mole. So two times one gram per mole gives us two grams per mole. Okay, so now we know molecular weight of all the players in this reaction. So now we can actually start figuring this thing out. So what do we need to do next? What do we need to do next? Okay, we need to figure out how many moles we have of each of each uh, reactant of each player. Okay, because in this equation we have, this equation tells us one calcium plus two hydro molecules of hydrochloric acid give us one molecule of calcium chloride plus one molecule of hydrogen, one element of hydrogen. Now, so that is all well and good, but the masses we are given, that may actually not be one mole, this may not be two moles, the ratios will be there. The ratios of moles will be there. So this can be two moles, this can be four moles, this can be three moles, this can be uh, six moles, this can be 12 moles, this can be 24 moles. So the ratios are there in those masses, but they may not always be one mole, two mole, they may not always appear as written in equation. This is why, this is why we need to figure out how many moles we have of each reactant in order to figure out how many moles of uh, products we will get for each one of them. Okay, so 
how do we figure out how many moles? Well, we got we got the molecular masses. So now we just need to figure out how many moles we get. So I will show you how to do that. We have 80 grams of calcium. Calcium, calcium molecular mass is 40 grams per mole. So how can we, how can we figure out how many moles of calcium we have? Well, well let's, um, let's do this here, okay? So I'm gonna write this down. We have, we have calcium, we have 80 grams, however, molecular mass is 40, so 80 grams divided by 40 grams per mole will give us, will give us two moles. So we have two moles of calcium. Now, what about uh, hydrochloric acid? So we have 2HCl. Now, what do we do here? We do 146 grams divided by 36.5. So 146 grams divided by 36.5 grams. Divided by 36.5 grams. Okay, and that should give us four moles. So we have four moles here. So as you can see, the ratio is there. We have two moles of calcium, we have four moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, knowing this, knowing this, how many moles are we going to make of this? How many moles are we going to make of this, right? The ratios are the same. So we have two moles here, we have four moles here. Now, if we have two moles here, this is the same ratio. This is the same ratio. One of this, one of this, one of this. So we have two moles here and we have two moles here. So we are almost there. So calcium chloride equals two moles and hydrogen H2 is equal to two moles as well. Okay, now we just need to convert this to masses. That's all we need to do. Knowing, knowing molecular masses, we know that calcium chloride now is 111 grams per mole. We have two moles. So two times 111 is 222 grams. About, what about hydrogen? We have two grams per mole. So that will give us, and we, we got two, two moles, two grams per mole. So that will give us four grams. Okay, so these are our answers. We are there. These are actually our answers. So this is 222 grams, and this is four grams. So as you can see, if you wrap your head around it, it's quite simple. First of all, we figure out the molecular masses of all the important players here, and then we figure out how many, how many moles we have of the reactants, and how does that ratio-wise, how does that compare to the products, and then we just figure out how many grams we have of the products. Now, if you were, if you were a bit sneaky about it, you could find out a shortcut, right? Because, in fact, knowing molecular masses, we could get away with just knowing how many moles of calcium we have, and that would be enough, because the ratios are here the same to calcium. So that would be enough for us to figure out how much calcium chloride we have and how much hydrogen we have. But for the sake of doing this properly, I went through the whole thing. For the sake of doing this correctly. Okay. Now, another important concept is here that mass is conserved. I'm going to put it down here for you. Mass conserved. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, if we add the grams here, so 80 grams plus 146 grams, 
And if we add mass here, 222 grams plus 4 grams, they will give us the same value in a closed system, which is 226 grams. So this is actually a good way of checking after you finished the question. That's a good way of checking whether the mass got conserved. And if the mass got conserved, you're likely to be on the right track and you probably have done this question correctly. Now, this is only true in a closed system where nothing escapes, where gases don't escape, where we keep everything. And the, so in a closed system, this is true, but in an open system, this may no longer be true. So that's important. Okay, so this is how, this is how we can figure out how much of the product we will get based on how much reactants we have and based on the equation. Now let's try to do something similar. Okay, so now we need to look at how to do it the opposite way. So here we have a combustion of methane, CH4, which is methane, plus O2 will give us CO2 plus H2O, which is water and carbon dioxide. Now, we are given the masses of the reactants as well as the products, but they are unbalanced and we need to balance them. So, we need to balance the equation used by using just the masses. Now, if, now you could probably, if you watched my previous videos, you could probably just balance this equation yourself without even looking at the masses, but if the equation is particularly difficult or if you say came up with a new equation that was undiscovered before, you would need to experiment with the masses in order to give you give balanced version of the equation. Okay, so again, first things first, as always, li I like to figure out the molecular masses first. So let's do that. First up, we have methane, which is CH4, which is equal to, now carbon is 12 grams per mole, and we have four hydrogens, so plus four times one gram per mole, which is 16 grams per mole. Okay, next up is O2. So element of oxygen. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole, and we have two of those. So two times 16 gram per mole equals 32 grams per mole. Okay, next up is first product, CO2, which now we know carbon is 12 grams per mole plus two oxygens, so plus 32 grams per mole equals 44 grams per mole. And the final one is water, H2O, which is equal to, now we have two hydrogens, so two grams per mole, plus oxygen, plus 16 grams per mole, which is 18 grams per mole. Okay, so now we have molecular masses of all the players. What do we do next? Well, next we need to figure out how many moles we actually have reacting here. We have the masses, but we need to convert those to moles. How many moles of each we have in the equation to get the full picture. So I'm gonna lay it out here. You will see why it's a convenient layout, but I'm gonna copy this down here. Methane, O2, CO2, basically all the players, H2O. Okay, so now, we need to figure out how many moles. How do we do that? Well, molecular masses are six, you know, for example, methane is 16 grams per mole, which means one mole is 16 grams. So if we divide 32 grams here by 16, this will give us a number of moles. That's the way to think about it. So here we're going to do 32 divided by 16, which gives us two. O2 
we got 128 divided by 32. 128 divided by 32, which is 4. CO2, 88 divided by 44. So 88 divided by 44, which is again 2. And H2O is 72 divided by 18, which is 4. Okay, so this is what is actually happening here. We get two molecules of methane uh, reacting with four molecules of O2, of moles, giving us two moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. That's what is actually happening here. However, however, in order to give a balanced equation, we need to give an equation in its simplest form. In its simplest form, guys. So this means we, we need to simplify it. We need to give actual simplest ratios. How do we do this? Now, you can probably tell that if we divide everything here by 2, that will give us an answer. But if, say, you had much harder numbers, for example, instead of 2, you had here, I don't know, 0 0.07 moles. And here you had 0 0.14 moles. Well, now you could get confused. So what is the simplest way that always works to give the simplest ratio? Well, this will be, we need to divide all of these one by one. We need to divide all of these by the smallest number in this group. The smallest number in this group happens to be 2. So we divide everything here by 2. So I will show you. So we have 2 divided by 2, which is 1. 4 divided by 2, which is 2. 2 divided by 2, which is again 1. And 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And this is our actual ratio of a balanced equation. This is what we're going to actually use. So let's plug the. So now the final thing is to just plug this in to here. So we have 1 CH4, so I'm not touching this. We have 2. O2s, so I'm going to put that down here. We have one CO2, not touching this, and we have two H2O. So bam, here. Okay, so this is our answer for this question. This is how we did it. And so the first thing we did here, as always, figure out molecular weights of all the important players in the equation. Then we figured out how many moles of each player was actually involved in the equation. So that's how we did it. And then the final thing we did was to figure out the simplest ratios, the simplest ratios to plug in here. And that's how we did it. Okay, so this is it for today, guys. Thank you as always. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate this. If you want to stay up to date on daily videos on maths, sciences and some university level biomedical sciences, smash that subscribe button below. And if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. And uh, if you got any questions, any questions, uh, just shoot, shoot me a message in comments. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much again and see you next time.